Hey folks, it's Fritgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 here in the Rizu Forest. No, I don't really want an articulated tractor either. I mean, that one looks good. It goes up to 375 horsepower. The one that we've got, how powerful is it? What, what am I driving at the moment? This one right here is 170 horsepower. Let's go to large tractors. Right, I'm driving a 170 horsepower tractor. Now, under large tractors, under mods, I've got an Alice Chalmers that I can afford. I'm not leasing tractors. Let's skip the John Deere's and so on. New Holland right there. Now, that goes up to 240. That's 110. This one here, this is the same. Why is that one so much cheaper? This one's 70 series super steer, and that's just 70 series. This might be the one to go for, actually. This is an old style tractor, so it's priced accordingly. I like it when people make mods of an older older vehicle and price them accordingly. But what, what's the difference between these two? I'm not seeing any difference down here. New Holland 70 series super steer and just 70 series. Are these made by two different people? I should say who's made them. So, engine setup, Genesis Turbo, that gives an extra 25,135. I can still afford that. What have I got on the front? Wheel setup, Brand, New Holland, New Holland, and Fiat Agri. Fiat, or just New Holland. I'll go with just the, the New Holland. Attaches, standard, and three point on the front. 1,600 kilo front weight. I think we would want the um attacher on the front actually i think that is something that would be quite useful for us but why are you more expensive i'm looking at this i'm seeing these options that we've got we've got the engine set up we've got plus twenty five thousand. so i'm a 240 horsepower engine in there Ninety thousand brands they're all the same Three point. And 40 Genesis Turbo. Puts me up to 120,000. What's the difference between the tractors? Narrow twins. We got tw we got narrow tyres available on this one, which I really like. Wide tyres. I'll go with the wides on this one. I think that's going to be ideal for that. Uh, I do want the GPS on it. I think. That puts me up to 140,000. All right, we'll go with that. We'll go with that. We're going to give you a different number plate as well. So we'll go type 2 right here. And this is going to be... Uh, I'm going to call this one Frithgar. Frithgar 1. Okay. Uh, let's go with that. I'll buy you. It's a 240 horsepower tractor which is a lot more than the one that we've got at the moment. And then I'm also going to get it a front weight. Right there. Uh, what front weight are we going to... There's so many weights that we've got now. Ooh, haven't used this one yet. And that's a one-ton weight. I don't know if that's really enough for the big tractor that we've got, but like I haven't got a minion weight yet. So I think we'll do that purely because I haven't got a minion weight. It might not be quite powerful enough, uh, quite powerful, quite heavy enough for what we want, but I think it'll be all right. So let's pick you down over this way and sell this tractor. That's going to put me to above 60 grand. So even though I've just gone and done all of that and bought the new tractor and I've bought the Stevie forage wagon, um, I'll repair and repaint and then sell it gets me 24,000 euros i've got 72,000 which means that i've got enough money to go and buy the next um sawmill and uh, not sawmill furniture factory i can go and make a furniture factory let's bring you over here yes the minion weight We've got the minion weight back. This is absolutely fantastic. And absolutely, yes, this one does exist in real life. I've seen all kinds of pictures. Just Google 
minion front weight for a tractor and there's examples of this one I've found them in all kinds of different places absolutely fantastic so there's our new tractor the Frit Hagar Frith Guard 1, there we go, on the back. Anyway, right there. Brand new, minion weight. Brand new tractor. We've got an 8970 New Holland. This is a beast. Let's just park that one up. And I think it's, I mean, it's January at the moment. We'd, we're not bound to go and do anything at all. And I could have a new carpentry workshop right here. But I'm actually thinking that I'd like my new carpentry workshop to be over here now this is a lovely level playing field it's already done we've got this farmland it's level all the way around me except that one costs eighty-seven thousand. i could go and put it there but as we already own this back here now, the road is going to come down here, but there's a nice level area going through here. This is this is fairly level already. So if I just start cutting down a few of these trees up to the boundary. Uh, yeah, I, sh I don't know if I can take those trees there, but I can remove these trees back here. And we should be able to put down the factory right in here. I mean, if I move up over this way a second, and then I go in here, and we take a look at this bad boy. Do 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 do. Uh, factories. Let's scroll all the way back through these millions of factories that we've got, because we want just a base game one at the moment, which is which one? Carpentry. There. Okay. Right, don't tell me that you don't have enough money, because I know that you do. I'm not interested in not enough money. 63, 62,000. There, I do have enough money to put that one in. 63,000 right there. And that we can put in over here. We're going to move the trees out first. But what we can do is we can put two of them down. Maybe sell the other one, and then we've got both of our machine. We we got we got it all over here instead of back in the main yard, and then we got room in the main yard to put down a few other things instead. And then this can start to become our industrial area, and eventually we buy up this field, and we got another you know big level area all the way through there. I think that's going to work out quite nicely. So we need to cut trees. We still got to do this bit with the easy arm controls, just off and on again. That's it, and then it works. Not quite sure why. Uh, someone thought that maybe it was the chainsaw mod. Um, the uh, lumberjack mod, I think it is. Uh, but I don't think it is that one. I'm not sure. Anyway, it doesn't really matter because it, it's literally two seconds to deal with. So it's, it's not like it's a, a, a massive issue for us. It's just slightly inconvenient having to do it each time. But um, yeah, there's worse things that we're going to deal with. Now, what I can't do is remember the controls exactly. And also, you know, it helps if we can see what we're doing here. So let's bring that one back that way a little bit. There we go. That's probably about... Yeah, I'd say that's probably about right. And we'll swing that one back over there. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut down a few of these trees right here. I suggested before that, you know, I could cut down a whole load of trees. Oh, by the way, yeah, I know I had several videos where the flashing was going on. And I did put a little bit of text on the screen saying at the beginning of each of those episodes to say they did figure out the problem. Um, it was because I needed to update my graphics card. I realized after I'd finished recording that I hadn't actually updated it for a while because I got rid of the automatic update program for NVIDIA because it was interfering with the recording. It was actually causing me problems um, with my recording software. So I got rid of it for that reason. And so I'd sometimes forget that I need to check for it, manually check it for updates um, every so often. Um, 
yeah, my bad. Never mind. At least it's done and it stopped all the flickering, so there's no issues now to be had. Um, I talked before about chopping down, what, well, not like chopping down hundreds of trees um, and like doing a, a lot of it with just the, the chainsaw mod, just quickly delete trees and we sort of go like that. Uh, a surprising number of you said that you actually do like me to do an episode now and then where I cut down a whole load of trees. And I was genuinely surprised that so many of you had specifically requested I do this. So I will do it for at least a little while. We will chop down a few trees. And I must say that I do actually prefer this to the Ponzi Scorpion. The entire setup just feels safer. Uh, when you're doing this cutting, because it's on a separate thing and it's detached from the cab and back from the cab, like if you if we take a look in here a minute and we go to the forestry machines, there is now a Ponzi, is it a bison. I don't know, I don't know a buffalo. It might be the buffalo, but anyway, there there is one available. I haven't got it active on here, but there is one available that um is a forwarder and it's got an auto load on it as well a log auto load so i may give that one a twirl at some point i'm always a little bit cautious about introducing too many auto loads because i've had it before and they conflict with each other and it can cause all kinds of nasty problems so i'm always a little bit cautious about bringing in extras uh but this scorpion king right here when you chop down a tree all too often the the tree is wanting to go straight through the cab and that's what i really like about this one is it doesn't let that happen and well i i guess it can still happen like it but it's it's lost a lot less likely to happen with this setup than it is with the scorpion king setup which is what i particularly like i mean the other ponzi machine is like this as well so like that's also i guess a a, a bonus so th th there must be a reason that they're like that now why aren't you oh there we go right it it was like it didn't want to grab hold of the um, the tree or something. I'm not quite sure why it was doing that, but anyway, it's grabbed hold of it now. We can chop this one down right here. And we'll go and get the timber runner and we'll load this bad boy up and cut these trees away. We're going to need to do that because if we want to be able to place down our new uh factory right here a new furniture factory we're going to need to move this lot out of the way so even if we don't take that wood all the way down to the sawmill we're still going to need to shift it out of the way of here because otherwise it's going to end up causing us some problems so i'm just going to shunt that one over that side so even if i just like get all of the timber and load it up and then unload it elsewhere so that we've just shunted it away a little bit I'm kind of thinking that at some point we will do a we will do a thing we well we will do a thing we will get a wheel loader and we'll get one of these now th there's some various options but I quite like this one there's a 370 horsepower there's that one that's 250 190 250 240 see all of these are, are, are smaller but that one right there it says jcb it's at, uh, it says um lizard as the brand it's actually a cat we can clearly see that that's a cat um big beautiful machine that is and there's it doesn't say combinations but if we go into front loader wheel loader tools the high dump bucket i think Actually, i don't know that'll be one of them right there that's definitely one of them that goes with the 980k wheel loader and 
the other thing that I'm looking for is a log fork. But what I'd like to see is a log fork that has got straps on it. I don't know if we've got one yet. There's been one that's sort of been the mainstay of my logging operation for quite some time. Uh, FS15, that one was introduced, and it was absolutely fantastic mod, and I used it a lot. I think it was FS15. I think it was introduced right back in 15. If it wasn't, it was definitely in 17 because I used it on Dal and Thumb. And then again, it came back in 19 and I used it quite a bit there. Uh, all of the logging that, that I did in Black Mountain on the time lapse series, I used it on that a lot. And it's absolutely fantastic log fork because it had straps on it as well. So you just go up to the logs and open up and sort of get most of them and then the log fork would pick up the rest and it, it did a, a fantastic job of that which really did help us out that was absolutely amazing so i'm i'm hoping that we've got something similar that we can use because a, a, a good log fork like that that you can is basically working similar to how an auto load would work uh, it just means that you get to move stuff around with log fork as well. And the, I, I mean, we don't really need that for this series because we just used a trailer and we loaded up like that. But the reason that I like to use it for the time lapse was because it offered a, a, a more of a nudge towards realism. I would use the fork to pick up the logs and put them into a big stack. Um, but at the same time, I'm able to pick up the logs quite quickly and efficiently because I've got that really nice log fork i'm picking up all of these trees wait a minute it's january i just realized i've still got the 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 seasonal growth yes fixed visual month oh it's off the fixed visual month is off ah i thought i had this fixed visual month on right let's Oops. Okay, I, I don't know what I did there. There shouldn't be any music coming on anyway, because I believe the music is copyrighted, so I, I, I don't want to be getting into that. Um, that just that just causes me problems. Why I've never, ever, ever, ever had the music on at any point in the videos, because I believe the radio music in the game, it gets you copyright um, strikes on YouTube. Well, it doesn't get you, it gets me the copyright strikes on YouTube. Which is always a little bit of a jolly nuisance, so I don't really want to be messling, me messling, messing around with that hassle. So I'm going to try to avoid it if I can. So let's go over to that bad boy over there and take that one out. We're doing all right now. We, we've got a, a, a little area that's clear. Let's grab that one. go and I don't know if I can take the ones up against the tree uh, up against the tree up against the field there I will try to take those ones up against the field there if I can get those out of the way the field itself is going to be a little bit more than we can afford right now so we're going to deal with the trees first and then uh, we'll build the factories and then see I can't sell the I can't sell and move the other factory at the moment because of the amount of money that you get for it. Um, let's go up here a second. How much is field 17? 87,000. And then I will want these around it as well so if i'm getting this area and i'm turning this area into an industrial area then i'm not at the moment going to need to worry about building that up as an industrial area over there the other bit that i was uh thinking about was that bit that's the bit there that's covered in it's open it's covered in stones and everything so I was wondering about going up there, and it's quite steep on that bit. I thought it could be interesting to go up there and do something with it, and also over there. But for now, we won't worry about it. So we go back to our farmland. We've got this, and we want 17. 
for our industrial area. We're going to want that area there as well so that we can sort of just spread our industrial area out a little bit. This will come later. We want 19. Our houses that we're building are right here, so they're fairly close to this bit. So we are going to not 19. The, the, the area for us around that is 327 for that one. Um, that one's 152. We'll also want that one and that one. So then our town can, a uh, houses, housing area can sort of come out this way. Industrial area down here. Um, we'll sort of mix the two in the middle somewhere. I'm not quite sure how we're going to do that. We don't want to be mixing them together too much. We don't want to have too much industrial right next to the residential areas. It's never really a good idea. Uh, so let's come over this way and yes, I can take that tree. I'm not sure if the mod I've got allows me to just go and chop down any trees or if it's just the fact that um, I own that bit of land with those trees on it because I'm not sure where the field ends and where the forest ends. Like We've got that same issue elsewhere. The forest and the field are it's the boundaries is not a hundred percent clear let's see well that one's all right so as long as we can get most of these trees out of the way i think this is probably gonna be enough we'll test it in a second just with the next sawmill at uh, sorry factory and then we can see if we've got enough room here and I'm keeping the time scale on one time speed just until I've got a few pieces here. There's, let's go and get that tree over there. There's one more tree that I want to get. I want to get that one right there. That's going to be the last tree that we take out. Oh, is that telling me that I can't do it? I don't have access to this land. Ah! Right, I'm not allowed that tree. Okay, right, well, let's we'll pick that one up like that, and I'll shut this off. So that one's going to shut off there, and then I'm just going to park this one up over here like that, so he's out of the way. Then we go here with the chainsaw, and there, we can start removing the stumps. So, yes, I can go and get the actual stump grinder and bring that one up and remove the stumps, but I don't want to. This is a lot quicker, so we're just going to do it like this, and clear them all like that. Right, there were none there. There's one over here, and then we can... Our next step is that we need to go and get our lorry and bring that one up and start uh, moving these trees. That one out of the way. See, some of them, you can see there that the, the bit is now sunk below the ground. It's gone a bit weird. Still works, though. Right, is that one out? I don't know why it's now gone below the ground. Let's try resetting it. There we go. That works. Where else have we got some? There is one. That's about it, really. I should also take a couple of these out, I think. There was... Yeah, I knew there was one on this side. And I can see another one over there. Put that one out. Right, that's gone. It does bug me a little bit, that one over there when we drive through. Like we've driven up and down through several times now, so I want to take out that one for our road and that one and that one. So let's go and get... I don't want that one. I don't want you yet. No, I want you. So I'm going to have to go in here and very quickly do seasonal growth. Where am I? No, it's the next one. Reset. Easy arm controls. Off on. There. Okay. Right, let's drive you over, and there's like three more trees that I want to chop down a minute, and then we will go and get the lorry, and we'll bring that one back up. So let's take you over this way. 
Right, so there's a tree there. It's kind of like on the very edge of where I would want the road to be. So I'm going to take that one away just to make life a little bit easier for us. If I do that, it will just make things a lot more simple. There. And I'll push that over there. Oh, I can see another tree stump. In the middle of all those logs. So we'll grab that as well. And then we've got these trees either side of the road. That I want to just clear a few of them out of the way. While we're here doing this we might as well. I almost forgot these. I was thinking about this before. Like uh, I would like to get rid of a few. So this one here is one that is a little bit of an irritation to me. But it's the one on the other side that's the biggest irritation because that one on the other side over there, the branches sort of lean right over the road. Ooh, steady. Right, I was going to jump out and go and remove that tree stump over there. And I thought, no, nah, I don't want to do that because uh, then we've got to mess around with resetting the easy arm controls, which is really, really difficult. It takes all of what? approximately two and a half seconds if that it might be one and a half seconds but that's one and a half seconds of our lives that we never get back again every time it happens let's move up there there we go and take that one out fantastic we go over that way I like this tree harvester, actually. I, I think this is quite a good tree harvester. I, I was of two minds when we started, as to whether I'd prefer the, the old-style Ponzi Scorpion or whether this one. But the more I use this one, the more I actually like it. It's easier for moving the trees around. It's like... In a real world sense, the machine is definitely safer. For gameplay purposes, it's actually easier for maneuvering the trees around and uh, just swinging the branches around and trimming them as well when you start cutting them you're not getting these tree branches dragged right through your cab I mean yeah they, they are sort of going through my cab at the moment but it's not really the same way that they are with the older scorpion so I'm, I'm really starting to appreciate this machine now it's it's got a lot going for it now do I go let's let's go on up so I would really I want to be taking that tree there probably the one behind us but I mean I sort of figure that we will do a bit more of this later I don't really plan on doing very much of it now but I figure well why not we, we, we've done quite a bit of it we can do an extra Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.